This episode is brought to you by Factor. I love cooking, but sometimes you just need a break, especially this time of year. Cross meal prepping off your to-do list with Factor. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service that can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Factor has chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals that get delivered straight to your door. I loved how delicious the meals tasted as well. We had everything from chicken to meat to pasta dishes. And not to mention not having to plan, grocery shop, chop, prep, clean up, all the stuff that comes with cooking. Especially in the new year, I want to make sure I'm eating healthy healthy again, but not devote my life to cooking. You can choose from 35 plus chef crafted meals every week that support healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, whether it's calorie smart, vegan and veggie, protein plus and more wholesome options. So get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash datable50 and use code datable50 to get 50% off. That's code datable50 at factormeals.com slash datable50 to get 50% off. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Brunchables, welcome to Brunch Talk by the Dateable Podcast, (laughs) where we talk and grub at the same time and dive into all of your dating questions, all the dating conundrums that you may be facing. I feel like I can't think about brunch the same way anymore. Like now (laughs) I just think about dating questions. I'm going to a birthday brunch for one of our friends this weekend. And I'm just like, oh, what dating advice do I have to give out? And I'm like, none, because they're all married with kids. So. I'm off the hook. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Or you can just uh, turn on an episode of Brunch Talk and just play it for them. Yeah, I'm like, I'm I'm here. Here you go. (laughs) Brunch time is really therapy time. Yeah. I found a new brunch spot that I really like near me because we've talked about this. I don't like normal brunch food. I don't like eggs. I don't like toast. None of that. I'm still very surprised by this, even <laughs> though I've gone to brunch with you a thousand times. It's not something I look forward to, right? It's fine. I'll eat it, but it doesn't excite me. But I did find a new brunch place that has more interesting dishes that are beyond eggs and toast mm. and bacon and all of that stuff. I do get excited about brunch now and I try to do that with my partner, but it's like this is renewed. <laughs> I'm a born again bruncher, you know, I was born like again kind of, bruncher. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I was shying away from it before. Now I realize I just need the right food to get me excited. I think I'm like on the brunch decline. You know, I used to go to brunch a lot, oh. but I don't really do it anymore. So this weekend is big for me that I'm going. But do you remember that Filipino place that we used to yes. go to that is no that longer place. exists? That place was so good. I agree, though. <sighs> so I find it difficult when it's just eggs because I'm like, I can make this at home. Yeah, it needs to be a little more unique. Yeah, throw some gold flakes on it or something. I don't know. Give me some ube. (laughs) I'll be happy with that. Fancy. (laughs) But don't just let it be eggs. Yeah, that's so boring. I do know people who really just love the basic brunch stuff, even if they can't make it at home. I think it maybe it's like comforting. It's like comfort food, right? So I get it. No judgment. You do you. I will say I am a sucker for good hash browns. Mm. So if a place can do hash browns, even though it's something I can do too, I'm all for it. Mm, I do like hash browns. That does sound very good. Well, we're making everyone hungry now, so we might as well dive into what we're really here for. No. (laughs) The good stuff. No, we keep talking about hash browns. Come on. This is what the show is about. Hash browns. (laughs) Question for this week. How can you tell when someone is serious about you? And for more context, our listener wrote in and they said, I have been seeing someone for 10 months. They call me their girlfriend. I've met his parents. I've met his best friends. However, when we're not together, we barely text and we typically only see each other one time a week. And we've actually never spent a full weekend together. Is this serious? Mm. If I'm going to diagnose the situation, I would say that this sounds like the product of someone who doesn't have much relationship experience. 
who feels like as long as you give each other the labels, you meet the right people in each other's lives, boom, you're in a relationship, done. And sounds like for you, our listeners, you want something more. A relationship means much more than just the labels. I don't want to undermine this person's seriousness about you because we don't know. But this is up to you to communicate what an ideal relationship would look like and what being serious means to you. The onus is not just on your partner, but it's also on you to help drive this relationship. I think it's so funny that we want to define the relationship so much, but we never define what a relationship actually is. Yes. We all have an idea in our head and we assume our idea is what everyone else's idea is. So I agree with you. Like, we can't judge the seriousness of this person. It sounds like to me that no communication is happening at all. So the first step is to talk to your partner. What is it that you need? Or maybe the first step before you even talk to your partner is to reflect on what your needs are in a relationship. Mm. I remember being in relationships before my current one that it still felt like we were living two separate lives. Even though agreed, like we had the label of boyfriend, girlfriend, and we took other steps, but we felt very on our own pages. And in this current relationship I'm in, I feel very intertwined with my partner. And I actually realized after my ex that I needed someone that I was living a life with. And that actually went into one who I found attractive when we were dating, and then also finding someone that equally shared that vision. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about getting clear of what does a relationship actually mean to you? First and foremost, what are your needs in one and then communicating it out? Absolutely. We all have such different definitions of what a relationship is and what it means to us. I remember living with someone for eight months and having that label of boyfriend, girlfriend. And I think I talked about this on a previous episode. I went away for a month and we didn't even text or call each other. Looking back, it was just a skeleton of a relationship, but we never filled in the foundation of what that is. The question then I would challenge you is not how can you tell if someone's serious about you is how can you build your ideal relationship with someone. And that will help you get your answer of whether someone is serious about you or not. It's either that this person is clueless or they have a very different ideal of what a relationship is than you are. So you're going to have to see, can you meet in the middle somewhere that feels good for both of you? Or maybe they're just totally unaware. They think that this pace is what you want. You don't have no idea until you talk to them. If that's the case, then the communication could just open them up to be more forthcoming with their time and spend more time with you. Maybe for whatever reason, they think that you want to do this once a week thing and don't want your independence in the downtime. If that's the case, then it's a very easy solve if you want more time together. If that's not the case and this person actually does need more alone time or they want more independence in a relationship, then it becomes a negotiation of what can work for the two of you. And if you can't find something that works, then you have to evaluate, is this the partnership I want? Even though I have all the labels, is this ultimately what's going to make me happy? And we're so focused on getting the labels in modern dating. Oh, yes. I want the label that this is a commitment. I want to meet the parents. I want to meet the best friends. I want to go on vacations together. Sure, all of those feel like milestones, but I think... In a true relationship that's constantly growing and evolving, that's just the beginning, honey. That's not a milestone yet. You're just scratching the surface of what a relationship could look like. I agree. You want all those things. I feel like if you didn't have those, then there'd probably be a question like, why haven't I met the friends? Why haven't I Mm. met the parents? Mm -hmm. So we always want it all and we deserve it all too. And we should get it all. But I do think that stuff almost doesn't matter if you're feeling lonely or unfulfilled in the relationship. Yeah. Like who cares if you've met their parents, if you're feel like you never even see this person. Right. So I think maybe you don't feel unfulfilled. Our guess is that you don't feel 100% though, or you wouldn't be writing this into us. And the other question to ask yourself is, are you serious about them? 
you can't control how someone acts towards you, but it sounds like it's a time to reevaluate your feelings towards this person. Do you want to be serious about them? How are you showing that you're serious about them? It's a two way street here. And we keep talking about the same point a lot, but it is so important to know that in dating, we don't need to convince someone or mm -hmm. try to persuade someone to like us or to be with us. It's a two way street. And if you feel like you're in the dark about how your partner feels about you, that's a major red flag. And that calls for open communication. Like, I don't feel good about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm uncomfortable with the time we're not spending together, yet we have these labels. I like to get more clear on what we're trying to build here. What are we trying to create? I want to go into like times, UA, that you felt like maybe things were more serious. And now in retrospect, you could see that they weren't. But before we do, let's take a quick break for a few messages. This episode is brought to you by Recess. You all know we love the idea of a hashtag sober first kiss. And Recess Zero Proof Craft Mocktails make the opportunity for sober chemistry even easier. It's the perfect drink for those alcohol-free moments with fun flavors like the Recess Lime Margarita, Grapefruit Paloma, and Watermelon Mojito. Recess Zero Proof Craft Mocktails are a guilt-free way to unwind. Made with real fruit, only 25 calories or less, and infused with functional ingredients. I found these to be my favorite drinks to bring to parties. I've also found them to be a great way to unwind at the end of the day, chilling on the couch, watching my favorite shows. Currently, I'm really into the Grapefruit Paloma, but all the flavors are yummy and taste just like my favorite cocktails. And lucky for our listeners, get 15% off Recess Mocktails now at takearecess.com slash datable so you can enjoy your favorite cocktails without the consequences. Again, go to takearecess.com com slash d-a-t-e-a-b-l-e -E and get 15% off recess mocktails today. Is your January looking dry? Get some lotion, get a humidifier, and better yet, get Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can compare prices across local stores to get the best price on a huge selection of drinks perfect for dry January every single time. Non-alcoholic wines? Have a look. Ready-made mocktails? Grab a straw and order them up. Beer without the alcohol? Yep, take your pick. You can find all of them here in the app, in that phone that's in your hand. Could it be any simpler? Nope, not a chance. So shop for great deals on all your dry January beverages or other drinks and get them delivered to your door or a blanket fort, maybe. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com. Must be 21 older, not available in all locations. And don't forget to lotion up your elbows. They're looking a little dry. If you're a fan of what we do here at Datable, then you'll love the hilarious podcast, We're Having Gay Sex. It's hosted by comedian Ashley Gavin, who you may know from TikTok, where she posts her viral crowd work videos from her shows. And if you're straight and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't for me, hold on a second, because Ashley is finally going to tell you what lesbian sex is. For example, is scissoring real? Well, you'll have to find out. Each week on We're Having Gay Sex, celebrities from all over the gender and sexuality spectrum like Jojo Siwa, Glee. Kevin McHale, or even straight people like Hannah Burner, come on the podcast to answer the most daunting question, have you had gay sex this week? The answers are hilarious and at times insightful. And on a recent episode of We're Having Gay Sex, Ashley dove into the topic of techniques to separate sex from your emotions, which I found super fascinating because I don't think I've ever been able to have raw emotionless sex with someone without just a piece of me falling in love with them. So anyway, if you're queer and and you're looking to hear about some raunchy, hilarious sex stories, or if you're straight and you're wondering about that weird dream that you had, go follow We're Having Gay Sex wherever you're listening right now. So I'm thinking back and I feel like the L word is a big one that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And again, not saying like you don't want to hear that. Of course you want to hear that. But I remember my ex saying this and I gave it a lot of weight and there was weight to be had. I felt it too. And it was important. But I think it made me think the relationship was more serious than it was mm. and overlook some of the times where he wasn't actually showing up in a way that a part that was a true partner would because I was holding on to this, oh, well, he loves me. So this must 
just be moving in the direction I want and things will all work out because he loves me. So I think I've given a lot of weight to the L word. Mm. Again, not saying it doesn't like require any weight, but I think it doesn't make up for everything else either. It doesn't just stop at the L word. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like once you say I love you, it shows that you're committed to keep evolving with this person. But it's not like your work is done. Right. We're good now. We can just let this coast because we love each other. Because guess what? Love does not conquer all. As we found out. No, it doesn't. Unfortunately. (laughs) Unfortunately. Unfortunately. (laughs) Yes. But I guess that's a good thing. Love is earned. You have to work towards it. I've definitely read into situations a lot in the past, like my quote unquote New York love, (laughs) where he sat me next to his dad at a movie screening. And I was like, ooh, I mean the dad. And he's probably like, oh, this is like (laughs) the only open seat I have left. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And then he him bring his best friend to my birthday party I was like oh I'm gonna meet the best friend already but meanwhile his best friend was like single and didn't have anything to do he just wanted his right. best friend to hang out I think it's okay to allow yourself the fantasy of like what's going on because it feels good to think about that yeah. but it's also good to like bring it back to reality and confirm some of those thoughts before you make those full jumps Yeah, I did that and I definitely set myself up for ultimate heartbreak and disappointment <laughs> I think you raise a really good point is friends and family mean very different things to different people. Yeah. Some friends of mine introduce everyone they date to their family. I can think of one friend off the top of my mind that has probably introduced 10 partners to her parents and some of them never to be seen ever again after they are introduced. That's okay, because to her, it doesn't hold a lot of weight. It's more like, oh, my parents are chill. Mm -hmm. They're chill. Let's all hang out. Where for me, I've introduced one person to my parents, my current partner. It's like a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good point. Like your comment about, oh, his best friend was just looking to meet other single people. That has nothing to do with your relationship at all. It's purely this person was free Mm -hmm. and they're coming along. Mm -hmm. We definitely attach a lot of meaning sometimes when it's not always there. And maybe we can dive into that is what are some signs that you think are pointing towards a serious relationship that are actually misleading? So what I can think of is when someone is taking initiative to book dates and taking initiative to plan Mm. vacations, yet at the same time, they don't take your suggestions. They don't take into account your schedule. (laughs) <laughs> you're just along for the ride because they already made the itineraries. To you, you're like, wow, that's so great. They really want to spend time with me. They're taking initiative. But you got to step back and be like, am I interchangeable in this situation? I could be anybody, right? Yeah, they're either super rigid. Yeah. Or I think I dated someone back in the day that was always on his terms. Mm. And I believe looking back at retrospect, because he defied the relationship with someone else that ended up being his now wife, around the same time that I was dating him, I think he was keeping it on a schedule on purpose Mm -hmm. because that's how you date multiple people sometimes. Mm. And I think you think like, oh, this person's so, they're just so driven and they're putting me first by thinking about my needs. Same for texting. I remember, and I love to text and I love when someone also loves to text, but I remember dating someone, a guy that we had on this podcast. Remember the first date in 12 years? I was his first of date. Of course I do. After <laughs> in the archives for anyone that missed that episode. That was fun when we would go on dating experiments <laughs> and hear we can the still feedback do it. live. <laughs> we can still do it for, for the podcast. Okay. Our partners oh, yeah. will understand. Yeah. I'm sure the people that were dating would love that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, okay, so we're purely subjected for a podcast and you already have a partner? Great. Great. <laughs> Sign me up. This guy, though, he was always texting, but I could feel that it didn't feel genuine. It felt like he was just lonely. Mm. And that doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah, it's like how you interpret it. And everyone has like different types of behavior. It could also be 
some people really want to be in a relationship, yeah. right? And they want to like show their friends and family they're in a relationship. So they put the labels on really fast. They do the introductions really fast. Yeah. They're very aggressive in the beginning, but then they don't think about, do I actually want to be in a relationship? What does it mean to be yeah. in a relationship? We've definitely seen this happen with people where it's like the love bombing happens really yep. early on. I had a girlfriend who finally started dating her crush of many years. This guy finally came around and was like, yes, I think I'm attracted to you. So they had a, they shared a kiss. He said, I love you within like two months. He bought her like a diamond necklace. Oh, God. He introduced her to his family and then poof, he was gone right after. He was actually mending from a heartbreak himself. Right. He had been in a really long-term relationship. He just wanted to fill in another girlfriend into that role. And she happened to be the roadkill along there. But to her, it meant so much. This is a crush she had been waiting for for years. To him, yeah. she was just another passenger on his relationship train. And he kind of dropped her off Ugh. when she didn't want to be dropped off. This is why it's so complex, right? Is everyone's mm. going through their own shit. And not to say, I don't want this listener to be like, shit, this guy's not into me at all. Yeah, I know. After we said Fuck all <laughs> that he might very well be we just don't yeah. know i think what we're trying to say is that sometimes the signs aren't always signs yeah and the only way to know is one to trust your instincts and gut i know that's not super actionable but i do believe like we know when someone's being genuine or trying yeah versus not deep down i feel like i've gotten into trouble when i've tried to be like oh yeah that's not happening but deep down i did know yeah did not listen to my gut in any way justified bad actions. Uh -huh. But then also, even if you don't know, how do you just open the dialogue? So you have a conversation and you can hear from them what a relationship means to them, what they are looking for in the future. I think a lot of times we're afraid to have these conversations, but it doesn't mean that you have to do all this stuff tomorrow, mm -mm. but it's giving you line of sight into where you want to go as a couple. And if you find out that you're wildly incompatible, what wouldn't you rather know now yes. than in another year, two years, three years? It's so crazy that people are so scared to scare people off. So they don't want to have these conversations. But if you're scaring someone off by stating your needs, then you scared off the right people. That is OK. Yes. When you rather do that than like wait two years to find out this person was not compatible for you. I agree. You got to just get that out early. But there is a way to deliver this kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think in this situation, always start with the things that you love about what's happening. Yeah. I really love that I've met your parents. I love that we are, you know, official as a couple. I love that you're planning our next vacation. I would also love it if we spent more time together. I would yeah. love it if we could spend a weekend together. Yeah. You know, go from there. Go from an, a growth point of view, like we can grow into this versus like, why haven't we talked about this? And what are we really doing here? It puts people on the defensive. Yeah. And sometimes they may not even know what your point is because they're like too busy defending themselves. That's a really good point. The last thing we want people to take away from this episode is ignore all the sides that you think are good sides and assume the worst in yeah. every way. Yeah, definitely are not saying that. And I love the idea of focusing on the good stuff because, yeah, of course, you do want to take the steps that you're taking, you know, even if they end up being not compatible for you still moving in that direction is a good thing and sharing that you like that because that is ultimately what you want. You might just want someone that gives you a little more as well. So alignment, <laughs> again, communication, it's always the same theme. I love this nuanced question. It's like, I am getting all the yeah. external markers of someone being serious with me, but I don't feel internally that they're serious with me. It's great. Yeah. It's great that you're checking in with your gut and there's always a solution to get you out of this conundrum. And think about what your ask is too. Yeah. That's really important. Like maybe the ask isn't, yes. oh, I need you to be more serious about me, but it's, right. can we talk in the middle of the week when we're not together? Yes. Can we spend a weekend together? Can we see each yes. other two times a week? instead of one time a week. Whatever your ask is, I have made the mistake before that I've gone into conversations yeah. without an ask and then it just becomes defensive and you're doing this and not this and it's not productive in any way. Yes, absolutely. If your ask is, I want 
you to show more commitment towards me, the next question to ask yourself is, what does that look like? Yeah. Even on a day-to-day level, what does it look like if someone were to show more commitment to you, show that they're more serious about you? It's a very good question to ask ourselves. That's a really good point. The bringing it full circle to the whole thing at the beginning is that we just throw out these words like relationship, commitment. Yeah. But if we don't go deeper on what the actual definition is, it's just this vagueness that's up for interpretation. Yes. And you don't want that. That's never a good start to a relationship. (laughs) All right. Okay. Well, I'm glad we unpacked this one. Yeah. A A lot of people probably have been there before. Very good question. Love that question. So that wraps up this week's Brunch Talk. We're always going to be hungry. Brunch will always be around. So we'll be back (laughs) next week, too, with another episode. Send us your questions. You can email us, hello at datablepodcast.com, or you can tag us on Instagram at datablepodcast or DM us there, too. We read all the questions and we try to answer all of them. Yep. And we'll see you next week. Bye. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Stay dateable.